Today, we're gonna to be looking at using CockroachDB as part of your AI ML workloads, something that I was actively looking for when I worked in the e-commerce industry. I'll be building upon CockroachDB support for vectors to build a product recommendation engine. Let's say I'm running an e-commerce website and I've got a load of data that I've accumulated from product sales. I'll be using CockroachDB to put that data to work and extract more value out of that data. Let me show you the demo and you'll see what I mean. I'll be using a beta version of CockroachDB because vector support is brand new. By the time this video comes out, it will probably be part of the main GA binary. I'll create a customer table that stores their ID, their email, and some columns that will allow me to perform product recommendations. That is their gender, which in this example can be either male, female, trans male, trans female, or non-binary, their date of birth, their location, and a vector. That will start off empty and I'll show you how I populate it. That will be the driving force of this recommendation engine. I'll create a product table, a purchase table, a purchase item table, and now we're ready to generate data. I'll use my own tool, DGS, for this. I'll generate a bunch of customers, a bunch of orders, and that will give me a data set that I can work with. I'll generate a known value that I'll be using for filtering and now I'll vectorize the data. Let me show you how I'll do that. The choice of how to vector your data is entirely up to you. You may wish to do it from within the database itself, but I've chosen to do it from the application layer. To create a decent vector for recommendations or any type of ML workload, the data will need to be normalized. These numbers might be in the range of zero to one, so I'll need to convert things like age, gender, and location to something that we can mathematically work with in CockroachDB. I've created some weightings here, and these weightings lend themselves well to things like fashion catalogues, whereby someone of my gender and rough age should yield better results to someone with a different gender to me and a vastly different age. The vectorization is quite simple. I fetch the customers in a way that I can interpret and perform calculations upon. I generate the vector itself to vectorize gender because there's no ordinal relationship between the genders. I'm doing what's called one hot or one of K encoding. That's to say that when I see a male or trans male, they get a value of 001. When I see a female or trans female, they get a 010 value. And when I see someone gender non-binary, they get a 100 value. Once the data is in this format in the vector, CockroachDB will be able to provide distance calculations between me and other customers. To normalize the date of birth, I simply calculate a customer's age and normalize it between the minimum and maximum ages. For the location, I'm simply normalizing the latitude and longitude and not taking into consideration the Z coordinate. And finally, I apply the weightings to give preference to the gender and age features within my vector. Let's run that. It's worth noting that vector support in CockroachDB doesn't yet come with indexes. We wanted to get the feature out so people could start to play with it, but it's something to be aware of. And now we're ready to start running some queries. With this query, I use the vector performing an L2 or Euclidean distance calculation to determine how closely related a customer is to me based on their gender, location, and age. And I simply print out their details. This will give us an idea as to how the data looks once it's ranked by that distance. So that's run and has generated a CSV file that has the gender, age difference, the geographic proximity to me, their vector, and their distance score. I've weighted this to favor trans males and males closer to me because this might be a fashion website, whereby their choice of fashion is much more likely to be similar to my choice of fashion. You can see that they've got very low distance scores. The lower the score, the closer they are to me. And we only start to see non-binary people, females and trans females when we get down to the 40,000th result because their distance scores to me in this contrived fashion example are further away. Now I'll use the vector to provide some product recommendations. Let's have a look at that product recommendation statement. First, I select myself out of that data set. And this is a customer who more or less matches my characteristics. Then I select the other customers who don't match my ID. I get their distance from me. Then I collect my purchases and their purchases, ensuring no overlaps. There's no point in recommending the same products that I've already purchased. And then I fetch those products and then return them along with their purchased sums. For example, other men of your age that are geographically close to you like these products. Let's run that and see what it looks like. I've limited the results to 20 
but this is what we can see. The Lux felt thermometer contrived and seemingly useless product should clearly be on my buying list because other people who are similar to me are buying it. That was CockroachDB for recommendations. I can't tell you how interesting this would have been to me a couple of years ago when I worked in e-commerce and had the need for a product recommendation engine. I've used this for products, but you could use this for anything. Wherever you can calculate distances between people or things, you can generate deeper insights than you would have otherwise been able to do. With CockroachDB's vector support, you can calculate semantic distances between things, allowing your queries to be a lot smarter and provide your customers with a lot more value.